Listen everybody To the words I have to say Better get ready Because the Lord is coming one day Thank you for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White IV, the eldest son of Daniel White III. The intro music that you just heard is my late grandfather, Daniel White Jr., singing a song titled Get Ready. Today, my father, Daniel White III, is going to share with you news and information relating to biblical prophecy so that you can be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books, including Just Jesus and the Prayer Motivator. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in 23 foreign countries, and is the president of Gospelite Society and Torch Ministries International. Now, here's your host, Daniel White III. Welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White III, here to remind you that Jesus Christ is coming back soon and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast is not about predictions, nor is it about foolishly setting dates, as some have. However, it is all about preparation. First today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked Jesus in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord and the end of the world as we know it. Looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First up today, Iran threatens Israel as new European Union sanctions take force. According to Reuters, Iran announced missile tests on Sunday and threatened to wipe Israel off the face of the earth if the Jewish state attacked it, brandishing some of its starkest threats on the day Europe began enforcing an oil oil embargo and harsh new sanctions. The European sanctions, including a ban on imports of Iranian oil by European Union states and measures that make it difficult for other countries to trade with Iran, were enacted earlier this year, but mainly came into effect on July 1. They are designed to break Iran's economy and force it to curb nuclear work that Western countries say is aimed at producing an atomic weapon. Reporting by Reuters has shown in recent months that the sanctions have already had a significant effect on Iran's economy. Second today, as a record-setting heat wave, severe storms, and wildfires mark the summer of 2012, a Washington Post writer asks, Is this hell? According to the Washington Post, it's only the beginning of the summer here in the U.S., and ferocious storms and extreme heat have already caused 13 deaths, hurricane-level property destruction, and widespread power outages in the east. In the midsection of the country, triple-digit temperatures pose a danger to health. 
many western states are battling numerous wildfires. Susan Brooks Thistlewaite, the former president of Chicago Theological Seminary, writes that the book of Revelation is a good text for thinking theologically about the rolling catastrophe. The abrupt and destructive weather events we are experiencing can be seen as signs of a global environmental catastrophe of biblical proportions. Revelation chapter 8 verses 12 and 13 tell us uh, tells rather of the woes to come at the uh, apocalypse sounding more and more like the local weather channel. A third of the earth was burned up. A third of the trees were burned up and all the green grass was burned up. That's a good description of what's happening in Colorado. This await concluded by saying judgment in a biblical sense is not meant as a suicide note, however. It is meant as a call to turn around and refine and refine rather what we are about. The judgments of the book of Revelation are judgments on those who fail to heed God's call for justice and mercy, both for humanity and for our planet. Now, as perhaps never before, we need the vision of the healing of the planet that concludes the biblical book of Revelation in order to renew our efforts to save God's creation from twisted devastation. Third today, as crops rot, millions of people go hungry in India. According to Reuters, every day some 3,000 Indian children die from illnesses related to malnutrition and yet countless heaps of rodent-infested wheat and rice are rotting in fields across the north of their own country. It is an extraordinary paradox created by a rigid regime of subsidies for grain farmers, a woeful lack of storage facilities, and an inefficient corruption plagued public distribution system that fails millions of impoverished people. A government-supported survey published earlier this year found that 42% of India's children under five are underweight, almost double that of sub-Saharan, sub-Saharan Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, you can read these stories in depth and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now it is time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics of prophecy and what will happen in the future according to the Bible. Our aim here is not to make predictions but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. Our topic for today is titled, The Seven Seals, Part 1, from Dr. John MacArthur's book, The Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Dr. MacArthur writes the following on this subject. Today, we will look at the seven seals, which mark the beginning of the tribulation period. The first seal, Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him, had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. 
and he went forth conquering and to conquer. This is a picture of the release of Antichrist into the world scene. <clears throat> the second seal, Revelation chapter 6, verses 3 and 4 reads, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Antichrist brings a false superficial peace, but at this point peace is removed from the earth, and the time of killing begins. The third seal in Revelation chapter 6 verses 5 and 6 the third seal is broken a black horse comes forth and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine a denarius was one day's wages, or fifteen cents. A slave would work a whole day and earn fifteen cents. Here we see that one meal of wheat, or three meals of barley, will cost an entire day's wages. Now that's a famine. All a man's money will go to buy food. A terrible famine is going to hit the earth. Tomorrow, Lord willing, if the Lord should tarry his coming, we will cover the fourth through seventh seals. In closing, let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of his second coming. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants us to be faithful witnesses for him in these last days. We should be engaged in spreading the gospel to those around us. In light of that, please listen to the following from the Ankerberg Theological Resource Center. Learn to listen with discernment and empathy. In beginning a verbal witness, it's essential to learn where the person is spiritually. What spiritual influences has he had in his life? Is he an atheist or an agnostic or a theist? What does he know and believe about Christ? Does he know anything about the gospel? Is he aware that he is a sinner? Is he convinced and convicted? Is he ready to respond in repentance and faith? In order to make these basic evaluations, we need to listen to what people are saying. Many of us are so busy thinking of what we are going to say next while someone is talking that we miss the verbal and nonverbal clues of the other person. Our most natural conversation is in response to revealed needs. People who are discerning listeners will find all the opportunities they need to witness in the natural flow of conversation with friends and loved ones. Let us pray. Holy Father God, we praise you, Lord, and we thank you for your holy word. We thank you, Lord, for your servants, Brother Ankerberg, as well as uh, Dr. John MacArthur. And we thank you for the, the, the ability to expound upon your word. But most importantly, Lord, we thank you for your holy word, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We pray that you would help us to respond to it positively. Increase 
the faith of your people. Help them to truly understand and realize that you are coming back soon and that we need to be prepared and we need to be standing firm for you and witnessing for you. Grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to do that. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, before I leave you today, if you are listening to this broadcast and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, God wants you to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior before he returns. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 13 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, friend of mine, if you are willing to trust Christ as your Savior today, please pray with me the following simple prayer. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today and forever. Amen. Dear friend, if you pray that prayer in sincerity and meant it from your heart, allow me to be the first to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ for your soul's salvation. Remember the words in closing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew twenty four forty two. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Matthew twenty four forty four says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Keep looking up, my friends, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator. Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. Remember, you can stay up to date with prophecy news and events on our website at secondcomingherald.com. If you would like to know more about accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, what to do after salvation, or looking for a good church home, please visit GospelLightSociety.com for more information. This radio broadcast can be heard daily on Live 365, BCNNRadio7.com, GospelLightWorldRadio.com, Buzzsprout, iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, and can be downloaded from numerous outlets online. God bless, and until next time, keep looking up for your redemption draw if not. Now, here's a song that will encourage you as you await Christ's return. You got to get your business straight.